It's Christmas time, in case you couldn't guess from the title of the episode, and we're watching some colonial folks as they go caroling through the streets of wherever they are. Tonight, being Christmas Eve, we should pay special attention to any kind of unusual activity. This is just the time for the colonist rebels to play one of their dirty little tricks. Like planting a bomb in your powder supply while they pretend to be caroling? This happy Will you stop that confounded singing and get out of here? You forgot to say bah humbug. I can't hear myself think. Sorry about that, Colonel. Uh, we thought you could use some holiday spirit. I could use some peace and quiet. Yeah, we'll give you as much of that as we can. Merry Christmas, sir. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Now he says bah humbug. I guess not. But we did hear something very familiar. Mm. Wow. Jersey. New Jersey? I guess. How old could Jersey be in 1776? The problem isn't their general location, but their specific one at this moment. Hey! Get out of there! Hey, there's a bomb in there! A bomb? Jump, kid! Yeah, a bomb. It's a thing that does that. Those redcoats will never believe Bog and Jeffrey weren't part of this, so it's time to go. Around the corner! Come on! Or not. You'd be okay, Jeff? I'll be all right, except for a frozen tuba. I'm fine. It isn't a very pleasant way for a boy to spend Christmas Eve. You should be by a warm hearth with your parents. I don't have any parents. He says, we don't have much of a revolution going here. We don't have a strong military leader. Sam and John Adams tried until the British caught and executed them. Something is very wrong here. They're about to find out what it is. Well, here they are, Admiral. The three fanatics. Looks more like two and a half. Release the boy. Admiral, he's as guilty as the others. Imprisoning children is hardly the way to convince the colonists we deserve to rule them. Send him home to his parents. That admiral is none other than George Washington. He joined the British Navy when he was 14. And the colonel is going to defy his orders and leave Jeffrey in the stocks as soon as the admiral is gone. I have a feeling we're going to be seeing him again. That's it then. Can't do anything till we get out of these stocks, though. Well, maybe they only made these things in adult sizes. Not the first time he's taken advantage of his child size hands. Where is it? On my belt. You're going to be okay, Nathan. Hey, over there. Is that the Colonel coming back? Where? I don't see anyone. Nathan. I hope his last name isn't Hale, because if it is, no, he's not in any version of history. Now, if they're still in New Jersey, that may not be him, or at least he may not be too near his destiny yet. Nathan Hale was an officer in the Connecticut militia during the American Revolution. General Washington needed intel on the British in New York, and Hale volunteered to go spy on them. But the British found him out, caught him, and hanged him. He's best known for his famous last words. The reports differ, but it was something along the lines of, I regret that I only have one life to give for my country. He was 21. Come here. Little mother, I guess it's goodbye. I'm sure you'll find lots of new things to enjoy. Places to see. That him? People yeah. Know, Must be. Father of our country. Sure if we can stop him from joining the wrong side. Everyone says the Royal Navy is going to be good for me. I know. It's just that you're so young. She doesn't really want him to go, but she won't say it out loud. If you really don't want me to go, I mean, someone has to look after the estate. That's what you want that counts, George. He's begging you to tell him to stay because he doesn't want to go either. These two need their heads bumped together to shake their words loose. <gasps> hey, good luck. Ahoy there, Mrs. Washington. It's divide and conquer time, so to speak, except the goal is to undivide. Just wanted to stop by and tell you not to worry. Oh. Well, 
I wouldn't say I was worried. Oh, good, good. Because it's awful easy to worry when you don't have any idea where he is or what he's up to. Yes, but I will. George has promised to write. <laughs> he did, did he? Well, that's what they all say, but they never do. Never? That's a little much for her to consider. But he's just getting warmed up. Just keep telling yourself that the Navy's getting better every day. Oh, why, almost half our cabin boys missed the scurvy. Scurvy? Oh, no, that's not counting the ones lost in battle. Boys George's age are real curious, keep forgetting to keep their head out of the range of cannon fire. She's already seeing a cannonball decapitate her little boy. But he says it's not all bad. There's always something to keep the boys real cheery, like the rum ration. Did you say rum? Oh, I'll admit it's not the best quality in the world, but the quantity is just right. Half a quart a day. And then there's the really big fringe benefit. Female. More than a man can fight off. George is 14 years old. Oh, well, don't let that worry you. The girls that chase the freedom around don't mind them young. <laughs> yes, ma'am, the Navy's gonna be the making of your son. Started off as a cabin boy myself, you know. George will probably end up just like me. <laughs> And now for the other half of the plan. Jeffrey is telling George about life as a cabin boy. He says, the worst part is missing your family. You miss yours? Sometimes it really hurts. On your birthday, and Christmas. Jeffrey is making up the reason, but the hurt he feels is all too real. You're out there doing things, even if it's helping people. And all you want is to be home. And all you want is to... A hug from your mom. I'd give anything for a hug from my mother. George is about to get one from his mother because she's running down the road after him. I can't let you go, George. I'm sorry, but I just can't. It's all right, mother. I don't want to go. And if either of you had been honest with the other, you wouldn't have needed voyagers to put you back on track. Speaking of whom... We got a green light. Hey, are you okay? Oh, yeah, I just got some in my eye. Bob, get me out of here. This is hitting Jeffrey a little too hard, especially after what he just said to George. They land in Pittsburgh, 1892, on a pile of garbage, but at least it's soft. Hey, Christmas Eve again. So? So why can't we be like normal people? So why can't we take a day off and have presents and stuff? I don't know. Ask the army, light's red. You mean voyagers don't get time off for holidays? Well, I'm sorry, but if we didn't do our job when it needs doing, there'd be nothing for folks to celebrate. Jeffrey's feeling pretty low, but he says even if Bog could get him back to 1982, it's not home with his parents gone. Gompers, you're delaying. That's all you're doing. Yeah, you're just human delaying. Human beings, your families deserve more. That doesn't I know sound like that, a holiday party. We've got Come to on. stick together as a team. Those men are striking to form a union, but it's taking a toll on their families. Another man is supposed to be bringing a bunch of money collected from other unions to help sustain them until management gives in. Did you hear what he called that man? Yeah, it's a shame. But if I can learn to live with a name like Bog, he can adjust to one like Gompers. Is the singular Gomper? And is a Gomper a person who gomps? Samuel Gompers was the greatest labor leader America ever had. My great-grandfather knew him real well. Yeah? Without him, people would still be working 12 hours a day, seven days a week. Like voyage. Oh, mumble grumble, this is no fun. You think you got troubles, just watch. Samuel! Sam, I'm back! It's Jones! Jones is here with the money. Those are strike busters, otherwise known as street hoods with no conscience and a lust for money. They go in and start bashing heads while the workers try to fight back. Bog is going to try and pull Gompers out of it. That's a smoke and foul gas grenade to cover the real reason they're doing this. Let's get out of here! The clubs were just a diversion. The real goal was to steal the money and keep the people hungry. I was counting on you saving the union, but you saved the union. Oh, I didn't do any more than these two fellas. 
You, uh, you fellas got names? Uh, yeah, uh, Phineas Bach. This is Jeffrey Jones. Jeff. Jones, huh? Seems we got the same handle. Stephen Jones. And this is Samuel Gompers. That's his great-grandfather, but there isn't time to ponder that right now. They've discovered the stolen money. Now, boys, relax. The company would like nothing better than for us to fight each other instead of them. Oh, ho, ho, ho. fight's over, Sam. Fred's right. We can't go on striking without food. And you'll get it. Just give us more time. More time? We've been striking for five months. And all it's gotten us is more of your broken promises. Look, if you feel that way, why don't you crawl back to the owners? They'll put you to work at half your old wages. It's better than starving, huh? Is it? They'll keep extending your hours and cutting your pay until you go to an early grave. What happens to your family then? Is it worth it when you're working so much you never see them and they never see you? Is it worth missing every event in your children's lives because the company has you by the short hairs? Gomper says, tomorrow was Christmas, so the place will be closed anyway. Give me that one day to raise the money we need. I agree. Who are you? The guy who pulled you out of the fight back there, that's who. You're welcome. Look, you've been on strike for five months. What's one more day? Consider it a Christmas present for Mr. Gompers here. Okay, Sam, you got 24 hours, but that's all. Stephen and his wife Amy are taking Jeffrey and Bog in for the evening. Bog! What? We used to be rocked to sleep in this. And there's more. We used to have this on our Christmas tree. You're real good at family history, you know? It's easy. Look at this. It's just like my own home. With so many items that got handed down to his home, how could it not? Is there something wrong with your plate, Jeff? You keep staring at it. It's great. My mom used to have some just like these. You used to? Uh, Jeff's folks are gone. I'm sorry, son. Amy declares that the two of them are spending Christmas right where they are. Bog wants to talk it over, but before they can get any further, Mr. Gompers comes over with bad news. The council turned you down? Even worse, they're holding you and me responsible for the stolen money. I'm afraid it's over. The strike, this union, we've lost everything. Bog says, I know someone who has the exact amount of money you need, the guys who stole it. Tell me where they'd be keeping it, and I'll see if I can get it back. It's worth a try. Well, there's a large safe in the company payroll office. That's the most logical place. Okay, that's where I look. How will I know it? Well, it was in a black satchel and $20 gold pieces. Right. But, Phineas, you don't stand a chance. It must be guarded by a small army of company police. I'll always prefer a small one to a large army. Come on, Jeff. Get out the door before they can object to Bog taking you with him. Hey, you know you never gave him an answer about Christmas. That's because I don't know what answer to give him. Oh, please, Bog, they're my family. But we're supposed to be helping, right? Yeah, right. The strike-breaking goons are hanging out not really on guard. <laughs> It's locked. Let's try a window. Good idea, except they're all up there. There's a fire escape ladder just out of Bog's reach. But it's not out of their reach. There's a handy window up there where they sneak in without incident. But not without dog. Come on, boy. Go get it. <laughs> you know, he's going to be really mad when he finds out you tricked him. He'll worry about that later. Right now, they've found the payroll office and that big safe Mr. Gompers mentioned. Did you hear something? He hears the dog barking in that room where Bog shut him in. Hey, there's somebody up there. Charlie, Mike, over here. There's a little good news. Jeffrey found the money. 
bat's breath. I don't think I can open this one. You don't have to. Look what I found. <laughs> I guess the guys who stole it didn't know how to open the safe either. All they have to do is hang on to it and get out of there. About time we had some good luck. Hold it right there. I told you it was going to be mad. Well, then it's time to make it up to him and really give him the beef jerky this time. Here, boy, dessert! Grab a satchel. It'd be nice if those goons assume they went out the window and down the fire escape, then spend the next several months looking for them. Gives them something to do that won't hurt anyone. Where are we? I'm on a sec, I'll check. Don't bother. We're back in the colonies. Ah, 1776 again. How'd you know? Over there. Remember him? It's grown-up George Washington again, only he's General Washington of the Continental Army, not Admiral Washington of the British Navy. He's getting ready to cross the Delaware for his famous attack on Trenton. That officer Washington was talking to is coming this way. Sarah. I'm here, darling. I've missed you so. And I've missed you. Aw, oh, he's having a secret little tryst with his sweetheart. How adorable. But soon it will all be over, I promise. Here. What's this? Washington is launching an attack across the Delaware tonight. On Christmas? What better time for a surprise? This is his battle plan. How not so adorable. He tells her to give it to that same colonel who put Bog and Jeffrey in the stocks. They can't get to her before she delivers the note, but the colonel doesn't read it right away. There's still a chance to get it back. Bog has unfinished business with the colonel anyway. We're too late. No, we aren't. That's my game they're playing. Schnibbits. Bog, how many times do I have to tell you? It's called poker. How can we brought these table stakes? That's the union's money. Trust me. Bog, come back! Uh, Bog, those coins are from 1892 and thereabouts and have pictures of guys they've never heard of. Not to mention, they may not know what a U.S. dollar is. Can anyone get in this game? Anybody with money? Never mind. I guess they're gold, and that's good enough for the colonel. Four aces. Guess that means I win again. <laughs> means you won everything. Game's over. Bog says, I want to keep playing. He says, tell you what, I'll bet money against whatever you might have to put up against it. How about that coat you're wearing, colonel? My coat? Well, why not? It's a real pretty red. What if I told you this coat is worth four of those gold coins? I'd say that's fair. Then give me the cards and I'll deal. Bog does play a mean game of snippets. <laughs> Look at Rawl! <laughs> Looks like he got in over his head this time. <laughs> A mean game. I know I said we'd be seeing the colonel again, but I didn't want to see that much of him. They have the battle plan, and the colonel never got around to looking at it or even knowing what it was. He was too busy getting a snippet's education. Bog and Jeffrey can return the Union's money with a nice bit of profit. Who cares that they're 1776 colonial crowns, not dollars? The Union can probably sell them to a collector for a bundle. See that man? He's a card cheat for certain and probably a rebel spy. Yeah, he must be a cheat and a spy. It couldn't be that you're a lousy poker player.
Those British guys are learning that it's possible to have too much help in a small space. Bog plays with him a little bit more and then follows Jeffrey out the window. Come on, this way. Bog, what? We already tried this way, remember? Oh, right. This is too easy. He's gonna find them unless they omnied out of there. Get that thing out of there! Get it out! Come on, keep it moving! Search the street, I want those two! Move it! Quiet! I said quiet! They're hiding among the carolers. He'll figure that out in a moment. I'm trying to find two rebel spies. A man and a boy. They come through here. I didn't see anyone go through here. You didn't, did you? All right, get out of here. Thank you, sir. And Merry Christmas. Ah! You still forgot to say humbug. Deck the halls with boughs of holly. Ba -la 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 -la. Tis the season to be jolly. Ba -la 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 -la. It would seem I give the colonel too much credit. Maybe running around in his underwear has frozen his brain. General Washington has his battle plan back, the British never saw it, and the spy is wearing shackles. It's time to go. Can we see you off? Of course. You know, I hate boats. I'm just lucky I never joined the Navy. I get seasick. Mind a bit of advice. Good advice, I never mind. Bad advice, I tolerate. Stand in the bow. I get the wind in your face. Makes your stomach think it's on dry land. That painting that shows Washington doing that as he crossed the Delaware River is wrong. The boats they were using were rather unstable, and only an idiot would have tried to stand up in one while it was going. But it makes an impressive picture. Thanks again, and Merry Christmas, boys! Merry Christmas, General Washington! Oh, Merry Christmas. Green light on the Omni means it's time to take the money to Samuel Gompers. Merry Christmas. God bless you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Ben. Thanks, Sam. I want to apologize for ever having doubted you. You too, Stephen. Forget it, Ben. Just stay with us until we win the strike. Huh? I'll stay. The owners can't starve them out. The strike busters don't scare them. They're going to win. People like them are the reason Jeffrey doesn't have to work in a factory 10 hours a day, six days a week for pennies. Speaking of Jeffrey, Stephen and Amy have an idea. Amy and I would like Jeffrey to live with us. Live here? All the time? Yes. And we don't have much, but... It's a home. He says all the traveling around that you do isn't good for him. Every boy needs a stable home. We want to provide that for him. All is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin mother and child, only infant so tender. That sight is enough to convince Bog that they're right. Jeffrey needs a real family, and they're already family, even if they don't know it and wouldn't believe it if he told them. Bog quietly slips out. Glory streams from heaven above. Where's Bog? Jeffrey. <laughs> Jeffrey, Jeff, wait. wait! Nobody's told him the plan yet, and I don't think he's gonna like it. Bog, wait! We were singing Christmas carols, and all of a sudden you were just gone. Where's your coat? You're gonna catch a cold. Bob, what's going on? Where are you going? I'm leaving. Leaving? Without me? Yeah, without you. But why? Your great-grandfather can say it a million times better than I can. Say what? But they can take care of you better than I can. Jeffrey doesn't agree. He's perfectly happy with the way Bog takes care of him. You know, voyage is no life for a kid. Greek food one day, Chinese food the next, no holidays, no... Do you ever hear me complaining? Yeah. A lot. He's got you there, Jeffrey. You do tend to grumble. What do you think you're doing? 
doing? Well, I should have done a long time ago. We're giving you a home with a mother and a father who love you. But I don't want them. I want you. Bog, if you can resist that face, you are not human. I'm a family. But I've already got a family! Don't you understand? It's you. Resistance is futile. You will be Jeffreyed. And all the people said, Aww. Bless you.